This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. House Democrats are continuing to probe how President Trump's son-in-law and adviser Jared Kushner received a top-secret security clearance, despite concerns from the CIA. The New York Times recently reported Trump ordered then-Chief of Staff John Kelly to grant Kushner the, the clearance, despite the judgment of intelligence officials. Then-White House counsel Don McGahn had also argued Kushner should not have been granted access to top-secret documents. Kushner failed to report over 100 foreign contacts on his initial application for clearance, which was denied by the FBI after a background check into his financial history and contacts with foreign investors. Kushner Kushner later revised his application three times and was ultimately granted permanent security clearance last May. Well, a new book uncovers details about how Jared Kushner has continued to let the financial dealings of his family impact the policy decisions he promotes overseas. In one case, this almost led to a war in the Middle East between Qatar and Saudi Arabia. We're joined now by investigative reporter Vicki Ward, author of Kushner, Inc., Greed, Ambition, Corruption, the extraordinary story of Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. Uh, Vicki, welcome back to Democracy Now! Thank let, you, let's Amy. begin there. Mm. I mean, it may sound a little odd to talk about uh, the senior advisor to President Trump, Jared Kushner, and how he almost started a war in the Middle East by asking you about a New York City skyscraper, a New York no, City exactly building, right, 666 make, Fifth you're Avenue. You're exactly right to make the connection. Um, so, the Kushners have this albatross around them. Um, in the book, I sort of think of 666 Fifth Avenue is like the Maltese falcon. It's just always there, and sort of all roads, when it comes to Jared's policy making, lead back to this money pit, this disastrous investment, where a loan of $1.4 billion uh, is coming due in February of 2019. And no American lender will touch it with a 50-foot pole, which means the Kushners need foreign investment. Uh, you know, tricky when 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 the it's a family business and the uh, the, the son is now senior advisor to the president. Um, the Qataris. Um, told the Kushners in the spring of 2017, when Jared was already in government. Um, Charlie Kushner asked for uh, over a billion dollars. They turned Charlie Kushner, Jared's father, down. So, um, bearing that in mind, you know, Jared has a new best friend in the Middle East who also has money, MBS. Uh, the future crown prince, it wasn't crown prince yet, um, of Saudi Arabia. Um, and uh, these two form a bond uh, that really alarms Rex Tillerson, the Secretary of State, and James Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, because Jared and MBS cut out all the national security uh, officials who should be looped in onto their communications, cut out everyone in the State Department. You know, these are systems we've had in place to protect our security and our government for decades. Um, and uh, Rex Tillerson, who's experienced, you know, who was very experienced in the region. The former Secretary of State. The former Secretary of State, but before that, remember, he ran Exxon, um, knew a bit about MBS's sort of brutal track record and was, was really concerned about this. Jared sees an opportunity for money, for investment in MBS and for subsidizing his peace plan. So he pushes the president to make the United States' first official vi visit overseas, not to a country with shared democratic values, such as Britain or France, but to the United, you know, sorry, but to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where they have this summit that is supposed to be all about cooperation in the region. But, Ten days later, or thereabouts, Rex Tillerson and James Mattis are mining that are at a conference in Australia. To their astonishment, they learn that instead of cooperating, the Saudis have led a group of Middle Eastern countries to blockade Qatar, where America has an airbase. That is our security in the region. They had no prior knowledge of this, Tillerson immediately knew that the, the green light, Saudis would never have done this without support from the White House, it came from Jared. Um, in, and 
what what MBS wanted from was to over was he actually wanted to invade Qatar. It was worse than that because he wanted the Qataris' resources, which is why when he eventually actually when he couldn't get hold of those, that's what actually then leads him to round up uh, six of the seven ruling branches of the Saudi royal family later in November. You know, it's all about money. Rex Tillerson said to Jared Kushner, Jared, have you noticed that the only branch there are seven? You know, there are seven ruling houses in Saudi Arabia. The only branch that MBS has not rounded up is his own. Don't you think it's statistically unlikely that they're not corrupt too? Jared didn't want to know. He didn't want to know when Tillerson told him how dangerous this was. Um, and actually what Jared did uh, was uh, what, what MBS wanted him to do, which was fire Rex Tillerson. But this, there's, a, there's an ironic twist to this tale. In the spring of 2018, MBS arrives in Washington and the president asks him for four billion dollars to help rebuilding Syria. And MBS says, I don't have that kind of money. This atrocious war in Yemen um, has cost the Saudis a lot and, and oil prices fell. Well, Trump and Jared listened. The Qataris then arrived in Washington. And, you know, strategically, they uh, offered Trump and Jared, they said, we've got plenty of money for whatever you want to do, but you need to end this support of this blockade. So what happens is that the U at exactly the sort of same time period, 666 Fifth Avenue, the Kushner's troubled building, gets an extraordinary deal that makes absolutely no sense. A Canadian firm whose second largest uh, investor is the Qatari Investment Authority says it's going to lease this building that, that uh, someone who's been involved in it said would be, would be worth uh, more, more valuable if it was just a pile of dirt. They're going to pay 1.3 billion, the 99 year lease, and they're going to pay that in all that lease up front. I mean, th this is a deal that stinks. Um, so, I mean, quite, you know, it, it seems hard. At, at the same time, the US changes its policy towards the blockade on Qatar. I mean, Congress is now quite rightly investigating this. Well, I mean, that's one of the incidents, uh, uh, one of the principal incidents that you cite in the book as a conclusion which, you know, people, you know, might surprise people, which is that Jared and Ivanka uh, are Trump's greatest liability. I mean, it seems yes. that there are a number of contenders for that position, not least Trump himself. <laughs> yes, but I think, you know, uh, Trump, as we've seen, um, particularly in this last week, um, to, to, a, to a much larger degree than Jared and Ivanka is in plain sight, right? He's, he's not holding back on anything, unfortunately. <laughs> um, you know, all the inappropriate things that have come out of his mouth or his Twitter feed in the, last, uh, in the last week, you know, illustrate that. Jared and Ivanka would never s say those kind of things, which means, that I think, that they're more dangerous in a way because they're in disguise. Um, you know, you know this, what, what I just described to you, I think of as sort of diplomacy in the dark. I mean, the idea that Jared is running around doing all of this and nobody knows anything about it, not even our State Department, not the National Security Council. I mean, that's, that's horrifying. So <clears throat> moving from um, Jared Kushner to Ivanka Trump, his wife, both advisors, of course, senior advisors to President Trump, last May, President Trump announced he would save Chinese electronics company ZTE from collapse just two days after Beijing invested uh, $500 million into a Trump development project in Indonesia. A week before that, Ivanka Trump's fashion business won approval for trademarks in China. Then last October and November, Chinese trade Trademark regulators awarded preliminary approval for an additional 34 trademarks covering everything from Ivanka Trump branded veterinary services, nursing homes, sausage casings, handbags, shoes, and even voting machines. Right. Vicki Ward, explain. So this issue of the trademarks, um, it, you know, is it, it, something that appalled everyone who worked 
uh, with Ivanka should appall all of us. Um, it, it certainly it was another thing that Rex Tillerson just, I mean, uh, found abhorrent. Because what Ivanka would do would, um, you know, she would get on calls, I mean, not just with the Chinese, she, you know, for all sorts of foreign leaders, um, you know, we have India, Japan, I mean, she get on calls or put herself in meetings um, in, in quite a subtle way and, you know, you know not, not ask directly in front of people, oh, and by the way, can you please now boost my business, which, which needed desperately uh, foreign support. It wasn't doing at all well domestically. Um, and, you know, I mean, we have very firm laws about this. You know, you, you can't stand on White House grounds and ask for money. I mean, that's just f flat out illegal. Um, and the people, so the people in the State Department watching all this, because they, you know, they, they would, would be on some of these calls, were, were absolutely horrified at how completely inappropriate um, it was, because it, I mean, it just seemed like such blatant self-dealing. What about the Middle East peace plan of Jared Kushner, yeah. to the shock of many? Not Secretary of State Jared Kushner, not National Security Advisor Jared Kushner, um, but <clears throat> Trump's son-in-law and so-called senior advisor, who apparently yeah. now we've just learned it was Trump himself who intervened above the intelligence yes, services yes, yes, to get yes, him yes. top security clearance. Well, I think one of the strong themes in my book, you know, is Bibi Netanyahu very, very old family friend of the Kushners. You know, famously, when Jared was a child, Bibi slept in Jared's bedroom one night. You know, Jared was kicked out. Uh, Charlie Kushner, actually, his father, went to jail. One of the uh, think counts he pled guilty to was the way it, campaign finance fraud, and, and that involved paying f in the wrong way for Bibi's um, many visits to Charles Kushner's uh, local Jewish community. Um, Bibi Netanyahu is like the grand chess master. Of, I mean, he may as well really have been our Secretary of State these last two years. The he, current prime minister who looks like he's about to be indicted for corruption, corruption of Israel. Exactly. Because Jared's peace plan is essentially Bibi's peace plan, uh, and it involves everyone else sort of doing things and everyone else paying for it, except Israel. Um, and and uh, I think you can't underestimate the influence of Bibi here. I mean, it was Bibi's idea to um, really have the U.S. soften its attitude towards Russia because he thought it would be helpful in batting down Iran and Syria. This is not a view that is shared by many of our well, any, actually, of our mates, security analysts who, who deal in the region. Um, and, he, you know, he was very supportive of this idea that Jared and MBS should form an alliance so that the Saudis could basically, and the United Arab, Arab Emirates, could sort of subsidize Jared's peace plan. Well, one of the things uh, that's been pointed out by critics of the book is that mm -hmm. um, Steve Bannon seems to be one of the principal sources, though you never say explicitly whether you interviewed him or not. And obviously, quite apart from the other problems with Steve Bannon, he is not a disinterested party. I mean, he has and has always been critical of, of uh, Jared and Ivanka yes, Trump. Totally. So did you interview him? Look, I've, I'm a I've got to protect my sources, but I would point out that if you look, I think the book has 25 chapters. Steve Bannon appears in six. So the idea that he would be a principal, well, I, mean, I think the, the maybe book that's is a very, you know, the, the book is sort of six books in one. There's, it's very dense. We actually start in Belarus, and we move to New yes. Jersey, and we go to New York, mm -hmm. then we go to Washington, but we then go from Washington to the Middle East. You know, I mean, it, it, it's well, there it's are many probably more striking so I because think, I mean, Bannon. There are not many people who are cited by name. You no, interview no, more yes, than two hundred, but but Steve Bannon was only in the White House. I mean, obviously, he was on the campaign with Jared and Ivanka, and in the White House for six months. I mean, the great the reveal. I think that's interesting in the book. It, about Bannon is that he was the one who brings them in. It wasn't actually Trump. It you know it was Steve Bannon when Don McGahn, the White House uh, uh, chief counsel, uh, counsel, you know, 
comes in with a, a draft in a, of an opinion uh, from the Justice Department um, saying, look, you know, everyone's a bit overriding the nepotism laws that we have in place, saying, look, no one really wants to do this um, to bring Jared and later Ivanka in. Um, but we can if you think it's absolutely necessary. But McGahn didn't want to do it, not just because of the worries about corruption. White House counsel. McGahn. Yeah, White House counsel. Um, but but um, because of worries about competence, actually. He said, how does anyone know that these two are going to be competent? I mean, it was a really good question. And he posed this to both Reince Priebus and Steve Bannon. And Bannon was the one who said, you know what? Think back to Billy Bush weekend when the president was so upset when those tapes, you know, drug tapes leaked, and the only person who could really calm him down was Ivanka. I think we might need them, and and obviously, you know, so they come in, and and six months later, Bannon is pushed out. But I don't, you know, I think that given the scope of this book, Bannon's time period um, in it is is very limited. And ultimately, your conclusion in these last 30 seconds about the power of uh, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump in the White House? I think it's, that's a, it's a complicated answer. They're still there. The body count that they've caused is, is up in the 30s. I mean, but, but I also I think the book shows that at the end of the day, she can't speak candidly to her father. In the end, he's going to do what he's going to do. Um, although, you know, again, it is complicated. He, he had, you know, he gave Five Jared seconds. that he gave Jared that security clearance. I mean, and against Trump. Ag and against everyone <clears throat> else's advice. We're going to have to leave it there, but we're going to do part two. Post it online. Vicky Ward, investigative journalist, author of the new book Kushner Inc. Greed, Ambition, Corruption: The Extraordinary Story of Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. I'll be speaking at Smith College tonight at seven. Check our website at democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman with Norman Shake.